Hi everybody, welcome to the studio. Well, as you can see, we're not in the studio, we're outside of the studio. Uh, and we're going to have a very special project that involves power tools, that's why we're outside the studio. <laughs> in any event, we are going to do a panorama, so we have to build a special canvas for this project. The canvas measures approximately 58 by 30 inches. And uh, we had to take a trip to the lumber yard, we had to pick up some wood, and uh, we've got our miter saw. And here are some of the other tools we're going to be using today for this particular project. First and foremost in this uh, enterprise is this fantastic miter box. It's a hand miter box, not a power miter box, because I've had it for years and it's solid and it really, really works great. Got it at Sears Roebuck. Right here is our square and we have a tape measure. There's our drawing that we're going to refer to. This is a small hammer. We don't need a big hammer, just a small hammer. This is cool. This is a Frederick's canvas pliers. One of my prized possessions. I have uh, a little hammer on the end of that, which works pretty well to tap in a staple or tack that is a little stubborn. But other than that, it's a very rare tool. You don't see many of these. Uh, there are the Fasteners. These are deck screws, which are multi-purpose. They work very well for this particular project. We got 10 by 3 and a half and 9 by 2. There's my Hitachi power drill with a special with a special bit, a star bit that comes with actually the screws when you buy them, which is pretty handy. This is a putty knife. We need it to pry up staples that we want to relocate. It's much easier to do that than with a hammer glue. Elmer's works. This is tight bond. Works very well. A T-square is very handy when we're cutting canvas. This is the canvas. It's a uh, heavy duty, fairly heavy duty, maybe medium duty. It's primed as you can see. It's primed on this side with a gesso coat. This nice coating of gesso keeps the canvas from being absorbent. And there is a staple gun with arrow half inch staples. And here are two 12-foot, 1 by 3 inch clear pine boards. Fabulous! Okay. We've got our vertical piece. And we have to cut one more vertical piece, obviously, because there's two vertical pieces required and I like to line up the first piece with the second piece and draw my line right here and that will give me two perfect vertical pieces precisely the same measurement. Here's a tip don't be sloppy with those measurements a tiny fraction of an inch can mean it will be impossible to square up your frame in the frame vise which we're going to use. So let's try to maintain top quality measurements. Okay? Okay, here's the next part of our construction of our stretcher bars for our canvas. This device. Actually, there are four of them, one for each corner. It's like a corner vise, only I can glue and fasten all four corners at the same time. Now here's how the corner vise works. Notice there are four of them, one at each corner 
of the frame. And they're identical. 90 degree angle, and of course we used a 45 degree cut here. And there's a rail that runs along the outside, like a little pocket, and in it is this strap. And the strap is connected to a ratchet. One ratchet is on this side, on the long dimension. And on the other side, we have another ratchet. When we glue the corners, we're going to tighten these up, and it will draw the frame together, and it will square it up all at the same time. Now, how do you tell your frame is square? Well, you measure the diagonal. If both diagonal dimensions are equal, then it's square. Okay, I got my measurement, 65 and a half. Let's do this side. Perfect. Okay, here we go. We're going to start gluing and we're going to go quickly. And uh, even though we're going to use fasteners, self-tapping screws on this thing, we I still like to glue it. Okay, now that we've glued one corner, we put a little retainer block in there and screw it down using this eye bolt. I had these custom made for me, these uh, corner blocks, uh, from a guy who invented them right here in town. Uh, his name was Arnie Depp. He's long gone, unfortunately, but he used to design and build his own tools. Outstanding. Okay, we are ready to tighten it down. As you can see, I'm using a ratchet, and the ratchet uh, works extremely well, a ratchet wrench. Uh, now it's drawing, I can hear it drawing the wood together. Okay. All right, we're going to go on the other side now. Okay, we got all four corners glued. Now we're going to double check to see that we're square. And the way we check that is we measure the diagonal. And if those measurements are equal, then we know it's square. Perfect, 65 and a half. Okay, it's time to take the blocks off and start screwing in the corners. Okay, one of the things we have to do is we have to drill uh, pilot holes so that uh, when we put the screw in, it doesn't uh, go off track, which it can in like an instant. These things really tap fast. But this will help us keep it all on track. Now here's the screws we're using for the longer piece. And this is a deck screw, and uh, it works pretty well. It's long enough to go through both this board and that one. And uh, you need two on either end. Here's the canvas, we'll roll it out on the table. Now you notice I'm not doing a lot of measuring, I'm doing approximating because really, this is like upholstering furniture. And we're gonna put a staple right there. Okay, you'll notice that the staple doesn't go all the way in. Uh, it's not really only because this thing isn't powerful enough, but 
I really don't want the staple in all the way because I want to be able to remove them quickly in case I want to draw tension uh, on a specific area of the canvas as we're stretching it. So it's not bad that these are out. And we have a hammer. Later, we'll tack them all down. It's great to have an extra pair of hands. I got Justin here helping me. And Justin, will you go over here? And I want you to pull on this and, and pull it so that it's tight right across this center. You got it? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now I'm going to actually pull the board close to you. Now the reason we work from the center out is any wrinkles will be forced to the corners and they'll be easier to deal with later. So I'm putting the staples about oh four or five inches apart for now. Okay, here we go. This will be a little easier. We have a little more to deal with on this side. Are you ready? Yep. Good. There we go. We got it. Now, what we want to do is we want to stretch it this way. Now, it's like wrapping a present. You, uh, you bring in this corner like that. Let's, let's stretch this. I'm going to put a tack right in there. See right here? Mm -hmm. here we go. This one I'm going to drive in just a little bit. And we're going to bring this up like that. However, now we got to do some super stretching. Stretching the canvas. All right, heads up. Okay, you're probably wondering why I had a garden hose in the background. Well, it's to water our beautiful flowers here, <laughs> but actually it's going to come in real handy because this is what we do next. And you got the camera. Um, uh, saw horses, possibly. I think we're going to let it dry. It should dry tight as a drum. But we'll see. You are recording, by the way. Oh, yeah, I know. The water does it. Because cotton canvas, it's cotton. And you wet that, and it shrinks up. It's a force of nature. I'm all about that base. Perfect. Tight as a drum. Hi, Gary Olson in the studio today. Day two of our adventure. Uh, we built stretcher bars out of wood and we stretched canvas over those bars. And now uh, we are going to gesso the canvas. We're going to actually imbibe a uh, texture comprised of brush strokes. And those brush strokes will catch the graphite or pencil lead as I'm drawing and give us a nice black line, but yet appear like it's an engraving. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get the gesso on the canvas right now and maximize our opportunity to get some really great brush strokes as the gesso dries. We got a mixer.
Okay, for those of you folks who have seen these videos know I'm not adverse to experimentation right in the middle of a procedure, and uh, this is no exception. Uh, I've got my matte gel. I ordered it uh, online. It's Liquitex Professional. Very, very good stuff, and it's matte which uh, is important. If it's glossy, it's too slippery, it could cause peeling issues down the road on the canvas. Don't want that. But if we have a mat, it will be receptive to an overcoat of gesso. And uh, that will be uh, a great way to seal the canvas and get the textural effect that we're after. This is a very heavy duty, almost like a modeling paste. And uh, it will show brush strokes and that's of course what we're after. You can see the brush strokes. And what's really cool is that's the way it dries. You know, most paint, especially acrylic paint, uh, dries uh, rather quickly and it stretches over the surface. And that, of course, is real desirable when you're doing house painting or trying to paint a wall. But when you're trying to imbibe texture to a surface, uh, they've added something in there to enable uh, the brush strokes to maintain. Uh, while it was all drying. Spend a lot of time working on the surface because then the surface will be not only a good receptor uh, to line and uh, brush stroke, but it will also uh, serve as a texture that will be visible through the paint layer. And um, it's, it's an effect that you can't get any other way. Well, it's dry. We're going to uh, put the coat of gesso on top now. Pretty simple process. And it should be dry to the touch and ready to paint on. But I like to give it about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It allows the paint to cure nice and hard, then I can work on it with graphite, pencil, what have you. And, um, well, it, it just is perfect. I got the right textures in there. I think it's going to work out beautifully. See you in an hour.